Hi, welcome to the customer attribution and engagement demo. Uh, what we want to do in this demo is to show how you can load up customer data from a Salesforce instance into TigerGraph, uh, and then we will show how you can use that loaded data for graph exploration. Uh, in particular, I'm going to demonstrate how easy it is to use graph to visualize a customer journey uh, from the perspective of uh, uh, marketing, customer attribution, as well as customer engagement. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is uh, you want to export out some CSV files from your Salesforce uh, uh, schema. So here I have an example of uh, some accounts that have been exported out from Salesforce. Um, I have some contacts. Uh, you can see I have some sample data here. Okay, so but before we can uh, populate the data with the CSV files, uh, we need to come up with a schema. Okay, so tiger graph is a uh, label property graph. So you have vertex types and you have edges. Okay, uh, roughly speaking, uh, and a vertex type maps to the idea of a table in a, in a relational world. Uh, and then the edge, of course, is uh, the equivalent of a foreign key, the primary key mapping in a relational database. So we have, for instance, uh, an account uh, in, in, in your Salesforce, account vertex type, an account has multiple contacts. Okay, a contacts. Uh, basically converted from a lead. A lead comes into the Salesforce. Uh, it's then uh, nurtured by multiple marketing campaigns. Now, the this is a many-to-many -many relationship, right? A campaign is targeted to many leads. A lead is affected by many campaigns. Uh, the campaign member is essentially a joint table. Now, no attempt is made to optimize the schema for graph. Uh, rather, what we want to do is to come up with something pretty close to what you have in your Salesforce instance, uh, we want to make it easy for you to export out your own Salesforce data and then import it into this uh, existing schema and give it a go, okay? So once you have your schema ready to go, uh, the next thing you want to do is to, you want to map data to that schema. And we already showed that you uh, we have uploaded various uh, uh, CSV files. Let's take this one for instance, okay? So you, to map a particular uh, CSV file, in this case context, to the context vertex type, you essentially drag and drop. And here's how you do the mapping. So point and click, you wanna just drag and drop and map different columns to different attribute types. As you can see here, right? And you essentially do the same thing uh, for the edges as well. So for instance, contact.csv is also used to uh, map that belongs to uh, edge type. So a contact belongs to an account. So let's click on this right here. And you can see, essentially we're mapping the account ID, which is the foreign key to the account on the, on the belongs to edge type and same with the contact ID. So the edge is essentially, you know, consists of two primary IDs essentially quote unquote joins two vertices together. So once you uh, repeat this process for every vertex type, for every edge type uh, in your schema, uh, then you have everything wired up and you're, and you're ready to go. You're ready to load up data and populate your database, okay? Uh, I've already done this, as you can see, uh, everything says finish loading, finish loading. But if you're doing this for the first time, I'll just click on this to, to start the loading process. I've loaded up uh, a total of 34,421 vertices, 104,000 uh, edges, and it kind of breaks down to the different, you know, 253 opportunities, 14,228 leads, and so on, okay? So once you have everything populated, you can start to uh, explore graph. So what we want to do again is to just use the explore feature uh, and bring up a fictitious account, VRG payments. Uh, it's, a, it's a fictitious uh, financial services company that's interested in uh, anti-fraud, anti-money laundering type solutions. Now, before I go further, let me just get more real estate here. And I wanna go ahead and ex set up certain things. Um, so for campaign, I'm gonna show the name, contact, first name, last name, title, create date. Um, 
Wait, wait. And lastly, opportunity, I want to show the description. And perhaps the, the close date. Um, there you go. Okay, so one thing you can do in, in, uh, in the Explore Graph is just double click on the, um, double click on the vertex that you want to explore. And it will bring up the nearest one hop neighbors, all the nearest one hop neighbors. So let me expand this. Here you can see, here's our account. Uh, the account has multiple contacts. It has two opportunities. Uh, the, the green vertices are essentially opportunities. Uh, we have uh, an opportunity that's a, essentially a renewal, a three-year renewal agreement. Um, this one here is called fraud circle detection. Um, this one, uh, yeah, this is a brand new opportunity that closed, okay? So we're gonna use the same, as, as you can see here, uh, the account also has multiple contacts, right? As, uh, as you can imagine, it takes a village to close big deals at uh, large enterprises, right? So you have uh, touch points with principal software engineers, data engineers, uh, VP, uh, VP of uh, engineering, uh, architects, and so on. So let's say I'm interested in this particular opportunity called fraud circle detection. Again, VRG payments is in the financial services. It's a fictitious company. Uh, financial services sector, uh, they're interested in uh, anti-fraud solutions. So again, what I'm gonna do is to just double click on that opportunity. And you can see the appropriate subgraph highlighted, right? I'm gonna use this trick here to say, show only the subgraph I'm interested in, right? So what I'm essentially doing is I'm drilling down on the particular opportunity and all the people that are involved on that opportunity. Okay, so here are the three people that are three contacts that are involved. Uh, you can see there's Joshua King, who's an, uh, as a data engineer. Uh, there's Sam Eisenberg, who's an architect. And then there's the um, senior manager of credit fraud and decision support, Jamie Walters. Uh, looking at the at the context, I could see that this guy, Sam Eisenberg, was the one who's created first on June 12, uh, 2018. The other two were created like a week later. Okay, so if I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna say Sam Eisenberg is probably the pivotal role in this opportunity. So I'm gonna, same trick, expand on it, right? And I'm gonna come here and say, show only the Sam Eisenberg subgraph. So now I have my opportunity, my count, Sam Eisenberg, and then all, all the blue ones are essentially campaign members. I can double click on it to find out the actual campaign. So you can see I can double click and arrange stuff visually to kind of get a uh, picture of the, the attribution graph, if you would, right? What sort of uh, marketing campaigns was uh, responsible for for helping Sam Eisenberg uh, on, on his customer journey, right? I can do this on and on. As you can see, there's a few of these campaigns, right? Uh, rather than spend the next five minutes uh, doing that for you, I've already created one here and arranged it nicely for you in chronological order. So counterclockwise, we can see that Sam Eisenberg, this is the opportunity. And here are the different uh, marketing campaigns that he signed up for, right? So this all started up with him uh, signing up for the developer edition. Uh, he signed up for a free trial on, on, on June 11th. Um, and then he signed up for a test drive account uh, about one week later on, on June 11th, same day. Um, shortly after that, uh, a few days later, uh, one of our salespeople uh, reached out and probably qualified the, the uh, the opportunity, converted the lead, and, and so on. Um, and then in, in later on in the month, he signed up for a webinar for G-SQL, um, which is our uh, query language. Uh, we'll come to that in a little bit. Uh, G-SQL, he went on to download the white paper, and then he signed up for another webinar on, uh, on uh, July 19th, uh, the anti-money laundering webinar. Uh, shortly after that, he checked out, he downloaded our benchmarks, he requested a demo, and then another sales meeting uh, took place uh, on, uh, in August, and you can see he attended another uh, Graph Gurus episode three, uh, anti-fraud, anti-money laundering. Um, shortly after that, 
there was another sales meeting on September 19th, and shortly after that, the, the deal closed on 926, right? So you can see uh, in a nice graph uh, what attributed uh, to this opportunity closing, what, what sort of all the marketing campaigns that were responsible. Now, if you see yourself doing uh, a certain set of uh, ad hoc graph exploration over and over again, what you can do is to consider automating the whole thing. And this is where we come to GSQL, right? So you can write a function called uh, customer journey subgraph, and we've done this. And essentially what we've done is uh, automate the whole process for you, right? So it's uh, Turing complete, uh, very, very fast. It's compiled down to C++, uh, and the whole thing becomes a, uh, once, uh, once compiled, it is also installed as a REST endpoint for you on port 9000, okay? So we can run this. So again, Sam Eisenberg. Actually, the sample data is here in the comments. Likewise, the opportunity is also here. And I'm gonna run the query. Expand this. So by default, the results come back in JSON. Uh, if you run this in Graph Studio, uh, you'll see it uh, in, in, in graphical format. Okay, so I've run the query. Essentially, you're getting exactly the same subgraph that uh, I showed in the, in the previous screen. Okay, uh, thank you for, for your interest. And uh, this is the end of the demo. Thanks, bye-bye.